what is good we're back we got a full house and we're ready to roll we have top buys at every position for contenders and rebuilders (laughs) knew you were gonna do it (laughs) most predictable guy on the radio (laughs) all right so we're gonna do all the contender side first then we'll switch it up go to the rebuilder side for your pleasure uh, we each took a, a position to talk about. I'm sure we'll each have some some other guys to throw in there and, and agree or disagree with. Let's start with the wide receiver position since that is the position everybody is uh, smitten with. If we weren't on air, there was a different word I was going to use there. No hetero. Caught myself. Smitten uh, kitten. Big Co. Hit me with some contender buys because we need we need because contender buys at the wide receiver position. Then we'll go running back. Then we'll go quarterback. Then we'll go tight end. Then we'll switch to the rebuild. I like Tyreek Hill for a contender purchase right now. Of course. The Bills have really, really done a good job limiting Tyreek Hill. And in the second half, it wasn't garbage time. It was a knotted up game. And even Tyreek Hill finally got it going. You know, second game back with the quarterback since the quarterback came back. And two was even ran a ball and slid and didn't get hurt. So uh, crazy. It, you know, you got your 30 year old run wide receiver who's disappeared from basically almost every game this season from the fantasy lineup. Obviously he's in the lineup because his name's Tyreek Hill and he's not scoring you any points and he's been upsetting you. So there's your buy window right there. The dolphins are the dolphins right now. They're terrible. The luster's off of them a little bit. The running game is up and down. Obviously a chains are ridiculous, but when he's out there and two is on the field, but like, it's just not what it has been. If Tyreek Hill's in your league and he's not on, you know, top three, top four team in your league, then there's a chance that that person may want to get rid of them a little more than you think they do. I'm sure almost anybody's probably pretty frustrated with them outside of, you know, they know that the quarterback was hurt, but, you know, that they're still not getting. That's what I'm saying. Frustration. I mean, if your quarterback's hurt and you're still getting 14 points a game, I'm okay with that, you know, but like there was games where it was just like you are literally the least amount of points in my lineup. Mm-hmm. And that's not what you want out of Tyreek Hill. That's not what you're used to getting. You're spoiled. Absolutely spoiled with Tyreek Hill. So I just, to me, I think it was just a spot where it's so much cheaper now than he was six weeks ago, you know? Yeah. And that that's a lot of fluctuation and he could easily play for two or three more years. So I, you know, I have to, I don't necessarily have a current trade that I've done or I haven't traded him away. I haven't traded for him. I don't have anything that, that I know that I would give up for him for sure. But I think that's a decent player that you could, you know, it's a great player for a decent price. You have yeah. the late one in Superflex? I don't see why not. I mean, I I wouldn't be interested. I would that wouldn't be my first, you know, offer. My first round picking is never my first offer. I'm trying to put it together with other players or if a package up this and that. Yeah. You know, just I mean, and like again, is as, as we talked on the last show, you use contender as a moniker. You use first round pick when we're talking on the show as kind of a value range true true right it, it's a good point it's a good point to rein me in there and the first round pick is a well is a it's good, a good it's point to, it's a good point to say what you're saying because you, you get one first round pick yes yeah, so, exactly you know what i mean yeah well and you know and, and once yeah you never know especially right now like if we we come in here and we try to help everybody else a little bit try, try to help you a little bit every week but you know it's week nine right mm-hmm. so like your contender today well you, your two best players get, get hurt next week right you know, so you're not a contender anymore. Yeah. You know, next thing you know, Rasheed Rice and what's his name for the Texans goes down. Nico the same Collins. Week. Nick, and Rasheed Rice Chris and Nico Godwin go and down in the fir- in the same two weeks, and then you're not number one anymore. Like I in, in one of my yeah. leagues, I'm like, well, yeah. that hurt, and that hurt quickly. Yeah. I was trying to find the stat while you were talking, but I did see something today where the Dolphins' running backs and tight ends percentage of passes going their way is way skewed from where it was at any point in the last like two years with Definitely. Tyreek Hill and Waddle. So that's a that's part of things that are aren't quite, you know, panning. Obviously you've missed Tua for a while. He came back, I think he only missed like three throws in this last game was was good enough and and you know I I, I like it. Tyreek's probably a, a pretty cheap buy that if if it starts going, uh, it could slap pretty hard. Uh and, and you got another contender buy for us, Big Co before we switch to running backs. Yeah, I wanted to go, you know, very, very, like, easy does it with the purchase price. And Cortland Sutton, 
mm. for for me is basically the only guy on the team getting targets in Denver right now. And you know, Bo Nix is running around all over the place, so that's that's extending the play. So it's not like you know you got your two seconds and you're done. So if the play doesn't work, the play doesn't work. That's you know they're all over the place right here with the offense or moving pocket all over the place. And I just feel like it's it's been good. And there's been games where their defense has been like hurting the other team. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to be the case every week, but even still like he's been scoring points and, you know, obviously he just crushed it and you get extra points because he threw a touchdown. That's not going to happen again in his career, I'm sure. But I Good think, throw. Uh, I, I just feel like he's very, very attainable yeah. for the, basically the guaranteed targets. Right. I mean, as, as, as a number one, he's big enough. He's, he's good in the red zone. He makes spectacular catches in the, in the end zone. I just felt like he's a really good player and you're going to have to pay a okay player price. Second yeah. Round I mean, pick. We, we sure. I mean, we talked about this. He's not, he's 28, 29 years old, so he should, you know, and he's still good. A lot of twos on that board right here. A lot of twos. A lot of twos. We had week four, five. I think we, we did a, a, a you know, stats you need to know. And Cortland Sutton was up there on a lot of the big time stats that everybody liked. And we kind of broke it down to you and the catchable targets weren't where they needed to be with some of these other guys. And we said, if these targets could just get back, could get on targets, they're very valuable targets. And in the last few weeks, you've mm -hmm. seen that happen. That's it. Now, will it be there every single week? No, but I mean, you don't, have, it's not going to break your heart because you had to pay you know, a high end player or for, you know, like you're saying, it's a, it's a lower. Well, lower you end. just said, you just said if, to, if, if it clicks and it slaps, like, Tyreek Hill can come out here and he can give you five, six weeks in a row where it's 25 or above. Mm -hmm. Cortland Sutton's not going to do that, but you're going to be able to pay a lot less. Yeah, no, I, I agree. All right. I got, I got two. I'm going to add on to here real quick. Jacoby Myers, uh, mostly because I know big co hates him and he was really <laughs> happy for the first half of the season. It's not working out for you for the back half of the season. No, it's, I was, I was going to text <laughs> you two guys with the, you know, with the, the muscle flex right there that we, where he's crushing it this past week. And, this you know, past week, Devontae's gone and they got nobody else to throw to. So Jacoby's out there looking real solid. Yeah. I mean, he's 27% target share. That's good for 10th air yard share 35. These are the last two weeks, three weeks rather uh, with Adams being either hamstrung or gone. Gotcha. With an eight, this is eight targets minimum. Mm -hmm. So 27% uh, target share. That's 10th for Myers. 35.8% uh, air yard share. That's 20th for Myers and first read target share 39.5%. Uh, that's third for him. So Jacoby Myers absolutely just murking it over week seven through nine, doing his thing. We missed week seven, it looks like. And Jay Wayne's grab yeah. he's showing us. Well I just I, I just eight through nine. So and I, in two I, weeks. I grabbed seven through nine on the thing. Yeah, you're giving to, everybody else an extra week. Right. So he's been great. He's been scoring fantasy points and, and he's he's super cheap. He's been a favorite of ours for a long time. Favorite of mine, favorite of Jason's not so much big because I know I know Big D also enjoys some Jacoby Myers. I don't know why Big Co should like him. I don't know why he's been such a hater. Just acts like the guy stinks and all he does is score fantasy points every <laughs> single year. I just I don't understand it. Um, and then the other one, Jawan Jennings. First or last? I don't know. Jawan Jennings is the other one. I like it. He's been hurt. I it goes down. Everybody's looking at Ricky Pearsall and they've forgotten about Jawan Jennings. This is a great player who the 49ers value greatly. He has come up, and I know nobody really knows because they don't watch the Niners every week, but he before this crazy blow up game that he had that everybody was started knowing who Jawan Jennings was, he comes up time and time again on big third down third and Juwan. In big spots. And, and converts him. And that was the first game where everybody had gotten a look of him getting a shot to be the guy. And he was the guy. He's been banged up. After this bye week, he should come back in and just could absolutely. And we know Debo, you know, if he's healthy, back half of last season, he was wide receiver one from like week 10 on. He mm -hmm. could have the same trajectory. Yep. And he's probably pretty cheap. But Jawan Jennings is, is going to be really, really cheap and could absolutely explode. Ricky Pearsall's a rookie and, and got shot, unfortunately. <laughs> Jawan Jennings has been in this system, been in this it, with Purdy and is as outstanding and gives them something, you know, 6'3", 212, you know, a little different than those other guys do. He can make the spectacular catch. If he can get right, I think he, the Niners could ride Jennings to big things for, for your playoff run in fantasy football. So I like those it. are your contender plays. Big D, you've been you just want to let everybody, let, let everybody know you're here. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel 
Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Yeah, I'm just I'm letting you guys uh, spit the knowledge. Uh, you know, the only person I would add is Josh Downs. You know, Ooh. Joe Flacco was out this last year or this this last game had a down down game, but I think if I remember right, Downs had nine targets and Flacco threw the ball 27 times. So target share is is massive there for a contender. He's a he's a type of player I like to add because I, I feel like he's going to add to your value with Flacco in. But I also think that from a long term perspective, I'm I'm still still pretty bullish on him. So I um, like it. Downs. Very bullish. We Contender love, and rebuilder trade target there. We love downs. We love Josh Downs over Jeez. here. Um, we get downs. We we do get downs to get up. You got to get up to get down. All right, Big D, hit us with some running back contender buys uh, that you that you're liking right now for your pleasure. Yeah, I mean these are some of the guys that you know I think are achievable and you can get for for a decent price. One of those guys being Aaron Jones. You know they've they've leaned on him. I think he's averaging about 16 points a game on you know through, throughout the season. Obviously he's had you know uh, there's been some up and down there with uh, some injuries and stuff, but he's been pretty consistent throughout. And the schedule just gets better. The playoff, you know, your playoff right now projected playoff teams that that he'll be playing. You know, looks like he can succeed. Uh, his expected points yeah, like are the schedule. Yeah, and I think, you know, there is some concern with Cam Akers, them trading for Cam Akers. But for me, that was more of an insurance play than it was taking away from Jones. So so he's one of the dudes that I'm I'm looking at trying to add, you know, pivoting over. The next guy would be Javante Williams. Like it. Big, big, um, big, big on my buy list last week. So I like I like the like the Javante. Yeah, this is one of those players that can go both ways. Like he's he's um, I've sold him on a couple of my rebuild teams because I'm. I like him, but I'm 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 not. I don't want the points right now, and I feel like he's in play right now to have some some strong points as the season continues on. Uh, same concept as Aaron Jones. The end of his schedule kind of loosens up comparison to the beginning, and target share wise, he's been he, you know uh, not him in general, but Denver in general have been targeting the running back position. Bo Nix is 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 living in the in the running back world, so. You know, that's part of the reason why I'm I'm concerned with Bo Nix, but but that's not on this part of the show. This is about uh Javante, and I think Javante is is one of those. I don't know if he'll be a league winner in the sense of like d- does he have that high, high, high end ceiling? I don't think that is the play, but I definitely think he's you know, you already got a stud at your your RB one spot. You're looking to solidify that RB two spot, and I think Javante would be your man. Yeah, he's uh he's he's a, like you said in the beginning, he can go kind of both ways there. He he can give you some some stability, I think, for your run, and then moving forward, he's a free agent and can be, uh, I think he's still a very good player at this stage. So I like that one. Who else you got? Yeah, and I think the last one right now for the contender run slash, you could also use him as a rebuild is Chase Brown. Like it. Chase is going to have that backfield now. With um, there was just a sleeper alert, I think right before us that uh, Moss is out indefinitely with the neck thing. And so even before that, though, this he was on my list just because, I, you know, Cincinnati's obviously been playing better. They're tearing up. I think they've changed their offense a little bit. I, they're about five percentage points higher at targeting the running back the, these last few weeks than they were for the whole, you know, one weeks, one through nine. So I definitely think they've they've started to find the groove when it comes to getting that running back in, in play. And, and part of that is pass catching and and Chase, you know, he is one of those players that uh, seems to have some polarizing takes, which is interesting to me. I, I you know, I, I personally don't mind him. Obviously, that's why I'm talking about him. But there are people that don't don't like him. And it's another one of those teams where, you know, it's hard to project what the end of the year is going to play uh, look like. Big Co was talking about it, just your fantasy teams, but even our NFL teams that we root for. Injuries play such a massive part in in the game. But as of right now, it's it's tearing up where his playoff run looks decent enough where you should be able to get that running back to production for for a decent price. And he's young enough where if it doesn't work out, if some for some reason all of a sudden you're you 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 go from contender to pretender and you you got to make some some sell offs, he can stick around on your roster, be okay, or you know you could potentially flip him or or some of your other assets down the road. So, yeah, I like it. I love Chase Brown. Big 
Big, big fan of ours. We trade a lot of trades as the escalator last year, as we like to call it, and pay, paying yep. off right now. So I'm going to go in on the quarterbacks here and contender wise. I did struggle with this a little bit because contenders for quarterback wise is kind of a weird one, right? It's not sure. like a not like these other ones where there's so much to pull from. You mentioned it in the last show we did, Big Co. There's there's really not even 32 that you necessarily want. Right. So to me, this you know, and it's a cop out here, but it's like it kind of boils down to price. If you can get somebody. You know, like Baker, which I don't think you're getting Baker for super cheap at this point, right? But if no, but he's gonna be cheaper than all the guys that he, right, like he's gonna. So be you have like, to stay in that bargain gonna, basement kind of good player, like Geno Baker. Uh, well, like Jay, like Jay said, you know, he's got a team with ba- Baker and Josh Allen. He's been playing Josh Allen every week. Baker's got more points than Josh Allen, mm-hmm. but you know, the trade package well, that it would that, take to that's get. That's what's tricky with the quarterbacks is like anyone that's playing good is you're going to be really hard pressed to get them off a team. You have to it has to be the right combination of mm-hmm. things to really boil up for you to be able to get. But but Baker at least seems like he'd be like you're not getting Jaden Daniels from somebody. Drake no. May right now is going to be really hard to get from somebody unless you're going into a rebuild. You're, you're willing to pay for him, right? So he he might be on the other side of that for me. You know, Geno is nobody gives a shit about Geno, right? Right. Like they, they throw they're throwing in a ton in Seattle. He's playing decent. He's only got 11 TDs to go with it, but he's he's got the most attempts and I think the most yards. The guys like Geno Baker, trying to think of some some other guys that are kind of in in that that sort of range. Sam Darnold, uh, Kirk Jones. Cousins. Daniel Jones got to get him in there. The contender side of the quarterback question was, was a little weird for me. So I think it's all relative on which guys you can pry away that are playing at a pretty decent level. I think all those guys that we just named are playing Sam Darnold will be kind of the only one that's like, you know, really could potentially traject even, even higher for, because he's a little younger and, Mm -hmm. uh, but Baker's still pretty young at, at 30, 29. Uh, That's kind of the way I was playing that one. So let's move on to tight ends real quick. I'll go around the room here and see what you guys think about it. But the two that came to mind for me were Hunter Henry with Drake May. We I went through it last week on the show of, of buy at every position for that, or maybe it was two weeks ago. And Hunter Henry with Drake May has been elite. Um, yeah. This past week had eight, eight catches uh, for 50 some yards. If it's premium, that's ridiculous. They don't have any other targets. You know, they got mm-hmm. nobody to throw it to outside of him and like pop Douglas Polk's a rookie. You know, they're just Baker's not playing. So, Hunter Henry, I think, is is good. And then Kate Otten is going to be a little more expensive. A lot more. But he's not ungettable, I don't think, from from some people right now. Like some people are like, I don't believe in, you know, Kate Otten. The, the same people who are mad that Jake Ferguson's good are the same people who tell you that Kate Otten stinks. It's just, well, it's just because of his volume. Yeah. It's like, well, what the, what the fuck are we doing here? Like He's good enough <laughs> to get volume. Yeah. And, and everybody's hurt. And so somebody may be willing to say, hey, everybody's hurt. This isn't going to continue. I'll sell you Kate Otten for, you know, a raised value, you know, twos plus to get you Kate Otten and moving forward. So those were kind of my thoughts on contender tight end buys that aren't like Brock Bowers. You know right. you know what right. I mean? Anybody got any other tight ends that they feel are contender buys that are obtainable? I think Najoku is still attainable at this point. I, I think had a little down game. Yeah. Had a little down game. They're going into a buy. It was a tough, tough defense. Jameis, Jameis had a James game, you know, uh, he wasn't eating W's. He was eating the turf, but, but point being, I think Najoku is still, still achievable. And I still think he has that upside of being a league winner. Um, I also like, um, Higby coming back. I don't know when he's coming back, but he's so cheap and Colby Parkinson feels like they're pivoting away from his, his play. I, I don't know if it's him, if it's injury, if it's scheme, but Higby is also man. somebody that's uh, pretty much free that you could possibly add at the bottom of your bench and, He's he's had a proven record with Stafford, and I, I don't think he's coming back for a few more weeks. But but I, I do think that he could potentially come in and 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 take back over that tight end role. Who knows where the Rams will be at that time? So I got a free one for you, Zach Ertz. Bad game this week against the Giants, but before that he had eighteen and he had sixteen. That's tight end premium points, but uh, and twelve. You know, so three weeks in a row, twelve, sixteen, eighteen, and then two against the Giants. You know, maybe something about the way they played defense this week. Obviously, Jaden Daniels is. Well, they don't have a good second option right now. That's what I was about to say that, you know, Terry McLaurin is a, is a stud and they don't have anybody else to throw to. And if Brian Robinson's missing games, Zach Ertz is, is basically he's, you know, right outside of the top 12 so far for points scored, just total points scored. And he's, you know, free is for, for like a contender to probably go get him for a fourth potentially. Yeah. 
All right, I like it. I like it. All right, so that's going to wrap up the contender side of things. So some 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 fun buys, some possibilities over there. Uh, well, let's shift gears over to the rebuild side of things. So these are going to be players you are going to go at every at every position to buy if you're a rebuilder uh, right now. So let's start with the wide receiver position. 